How High We Go in the Dark by Sequoia Nakamatsu. Overview. For fans of Cloud Atlas and Station Eleven, a spellbinding and profound present debut for, uh, that follows a cast of intricately linked characters over hundreds of years as humanity struggles to rebuild itself in the aftermath of a climate plague, a daring and deeply heartfelt work of mind-bending imagination from a singular new voice. Beginning in 2030, a grieving archaeologist arrives at the Arctic Circle to continue the work of his recently deceased daughter at the Badakata Crater, where researchers are studying long-buried secrets now revealed in melting permafrost, including the perfectly preserved remains of a girl who appears to have died of an ancient virus. Once unleashed, the Arctic Plague will reshape life on Earth for generations to come, quickly traversing the globe, forcing humanity to devise the myriad of moving and inventable ways to embrace the possibility in the face of tragedy. In the theme park designed for terminally ill children, a cynical employee falls in love with a mother desperate to hold on to her infected son. A heartbroken scientist searching for a cure finds a second chance at fatherhood when one of his subjects, one of his test subjects, a pig, develops the capacity for human speech. A widowed painter and her teenage daughter embark on a cosmic quest to locate a new home planet. From further... From funerary skyscrapers to hotels for the dead in interstellar starships, Sakoya Nakamatsu takes the readers on a widely original and compassionate journey spanning continents, centuries, and even celestial bodies to tell a story about the resiliency of the human spirit, our infinite capacity to dream, and the connective threads that tie us all together in the universe. Review. I usually don't like comparing the book's uh, tropes anymore, but I viewed this book to be in similar style to World War Z but with a few big problems, where World War Z told the story of zombie apocalypse in the interview style of first-person perspective that unfolds the world and actions undertaken by humanity in the dealings with Zeke. Uh, this story is told from a first-person perspective vignette of people in a world where a mysterious, possibly paranormal virus begins infecting the world. Like any collection like this, you'll have ones that you like and ones that you don't. The best one was definitely the not Mickey Mouse uh, costume or comedian who worked as an amusement park for kids who were sick and would have one last day of joy before taking a ride on a roller coaster that would pull 10 Gs three different times and peacefully kill them. It was the most impactful of doing what should be done in these types of story structures. It offers you an intimate look at one facet of life that is changed as a result of the greater thing happening in the world of the story. It's not going to provide you every day detail that you want, but offer insights for you to build and piece together what the greater plot involves. The book does this fairly well. There are some details that are told to you in a way an interview would take place, but there are a few details you could pick out that build the world as the story progresses over the story's timeline. The weaker stories are fine, but didn't offer as much impact as one that I really did like. There are three stories that didn't make much sense of having so little impact, which felt like big misses of opportunity to really build the world out. No spoilers here. Uh, the first was the father of the first girl to die of the virus of, in Antarctica. The otherworldly nature of the origins of the virus was lost in this droll beginning. I had to get more detail from the back of the book than I did the story. Another was a story of those who were maybe dead or asleep or something paranormal. It really wasn't an explanation for what the deal was with that was, and the fact that it was still in first-person form kind of took away from the interview-like motif the book seemed to be going for. The other missed opportunity was from the woman of the virus origin. It stops way too early in her story, and while you could see why it was included there, there was no real reason to stop before the virus comes to the modern world. There are a couple things that stop this story from being really good. I will refer to World War Z a few times because uh, where that story worked because of these elements, this story wasn't as grounded. The first was a lack of individual accomplishments to the overall story, where World War Z had many individuals who made massive strides that affected the full world. This story had no one. There are mentions and even focus of stories of individuals who are working to stop the virus, but any reports from characters put the focus on governments or scientists or groups. For a story where your storytelling element is from individuals, this loss of realism where developments and breakthroughs happen in the real world by individualism seems odd. The second part is ironic in that it fails to take on the bigger consequences of death on people. In World War Z, characters and stories show the worldwide cultural shift of having to deal with zombies. Kids don't swim in the shallow water. 
uh, people become more religious or res- less religious. Uh, death is dealt with in different ways since it's always a bite away. And yes, the story has those moments like the amusement park of joy and death. However, it doesn't show how the world is impacted from a psychological and sociological level. Again, there are stories that give bigger hints than others. Hotels designed to prep for death or robot dog repairs that preserve loved ones. But the story presents industries rising up to capitalize on the body count, but it doesn't do so with a greater amount than what we already have now. Death is on the door at all times and people die every day. What happens when that's even closer, more consistently? The biggest flaw of the book is the lack of religion. I know, I know. Me talking about Christianity uh, in in a book review seems uh, a a bit uh, uh, basic. Uh, But there's there's a lack of religion and there's also a lack of hope. There is your stereotypical and must-have lines about the end is near preachers, uh, but major and dramatic changes to the entire world within the scope of the book. The, The absence of religion makes the book feel too divorced from reality. A mysterious girl frozen in ice that upends how humanity views its place in history and a major deadly disease infects the world, and especially kids, science experiments that would affect how we view ourselves, the intersection of technology and memories, interstellar travel, etc. The silence of religion in the story is deafening. This isn't the case of, oh, they can't include everything, rings hollow as it would if the story failed to talk about the impact of death. And on the same vein, the absence of hope devoid the realism of the science fiction. There is no individuals to look to. There is no religion to believe in. There is no life to live. There is not even a spark of hope discussed. In a world where a virus is killing people and children uh, that causes individuals to almost exclusively be death-focused, there's no hope. Why keep going on in life? Why seek out life on another world? Why have new children? Why continue to go to work? Why are there farmers? Why is, what, where's the economic impact? Where's the one piece of metaphysical necessity that drives all great sci-fi? Where's the looking up instead of looking down that any story about death needs unless you end in a world like The Road by Cormac McCarthy, where even the bleak story had hope? In World War Z, you had the notions become theocracies. In World War Z, you had nations become theocracies. You had people put their trust in individuals, showing ways forward. You had people look to keep fighting because the stories offered a way out of the present darkness. The opposite happens here, where one has to wonder why suicide isn't discussed at all. It's a missing puzzle piece that science fiction is based on Christianity, is absent, but story elements that would be perfect for discussing the impact it would greatly have. Even if the author killed off religion and Christianity in particular, it would treat the story in the realm of reality. Instead, you get a takeaway of death is super sad and affects people, but we get by with continuing on and advancing the species through some evolutionary process, which the book undermines in the end. You can't have it both ways. All that being said, I enjoyed the book and parts that have stuck with me, which I look for in something of this nature. While the sci-fi futuristic elements tend to come out of nowhere, it does a good job of presenting the variety of different stories for one to hold on to. Death is sad and has an impact in different ways on some. The missing elements are what limits the from being a good book. Comparing it to World War Z is never going to put it on the same level, but it should be grateful just to be nominated. Final grade, B-minus. <laughs>